Jared, when uh, Tony Abbott, talking about picking on people with uh, mentioning truths, Tony Abbott, a Conservative, was Prime Minister. Um, he backed plans by the West Australian Liberal Government to phase out Aboriginal communities where there were few people right out the bush, you know, remote ones, few people there, no jobs, no future, but which cost an absolute fortune in services that could be better directed to bigger Aboriginal communities where there were jobs. The media and activists went nuts when he said this. It's not the job of the taxpayer to subsidise lifestyle choices. That's the Prime Minister's choice of words as he backed the planned closure of many remote West Australian Aboriginal communities forced by a federal funding shortfall. Fine, by all means live in a remote location, but there's a limit to what you can expect the state to do for you. What do you make of Tony Abbott's choice of words here? I think they're poorly thought out. I think, um, um, I think they will cause offence in the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander community. I think the key word here is choice. It's as if people make a choice to move to these communities. Labor, of course, and uh, Tony Abbott is a disgrace. The United Nations condemned the plan. And in Western Australia, the Labor opposition of one of its front benches, Ben Wyatt, talented man, damn it too. But now that Labor is in government and Wyatt is its treasurer, it has done exactly the kind of thing that Abbott recommended. It's quietly cut services to 25 remote Aboriginal communities which just aren't used often enough to justify the cost. The moral here, Jared? Well, the moral is, of course, the old-fashioned double standard. Look, I can understand why politicians get into this business and both sides of politics do it and those outside of mainstream politics do it as well. But it's when journalists support these kind of comments and then say nothing when the policy is reversed. In other words, when the, new, when the Western Australian Labor government says it, most of the journalists are quiet, not all of them, most of them are quiet. If the Western Australian Liberal pr Premier says it, there's criticism. When Tony Abbott supported the Western Australian Liberal Premier at the time, there was criticism of our then Prime Minister. So what you've got is a double standard, but what journalists are supposed to be doing is picking up double standards. Their role is to, is to inquire, is to be critical, uh, is to think critically, not to accept what people say. So if a journalist holds a view on one issue, when the policy changes, that journalist should be critical, but we're not seeing much of that at all. We're not seeing much of this criticism that was very strong against Mr Abbott when he was Prime Minister. We're not seeing much on SBS, if anything. We're not seeing much on the ABC, if anything. Nothing much in nine newspapers, if anything. Uh, it has been covered, it has been covered in, in News Corp publications. But a classic example yeah, of double standards... Yeah, but only to note the hypocrisy, Jared. It wasn't to uh, slam them as racist and insensitive and going against Aboriginal rights. It wasn't to do that. It was simply to note, this is what's been done, and this is yeah. in contrast with what Labor said back five years ago when a Conservative tried to do this. I mean, this is the thing, and it goes to what I was just talking about with uh, Stephen Hicks a moment ago. People judging arguments by who says it, as in what tribe says it, not whether judging those arguments by the truth or falsity of what is being put to them. Well, I think that's increasing. Uh, as we become more tribalised, as we embrace more secular religions, in a sense, like you find within the ABC, within large parts of SBS, so this tendency increases. So the, the tendency of double standards increases because you only believe that one position is true. So if, if someone uh, adopts a different position, you, you act accordingly, according to your own ideological point of view. So that's just an example of increasing tribalism, increasing ideological stances within large sections of the media. Not all sections of the media, but large sections of the media. Now, Jared, uh, just quickly, uh, we're out of time, but I need to get you on this because I think it sums it all up a bit. I mentioned that the Liberal MPs watching have got to know that the ABC is acting unlawfully and also unhealthily in a democracy. Something's got to be done. They can't just keep sitting there doing nothing. And I was struck by the fact that I reckon they even know that the ABC is like this. Instead of doing something, well, the, some, the little something they do is not appear. I was struck by something you pointed out, ABC's Q&A panel last night, one of its show uh, piece shows, you know, a show about education featuring a student and a headmaster, but also featuring federal Labor frontbencher, Tanya Plibersek, but no federal 
liberal politician, just a, a former liberal state education minister, is now with an education lobby group that's actually more centre-left, uh, tied to uh, David Gonski. Does that suggest to you that there's, in effect, a boycott of the show by Liberals who realise they're on a hiding to nothing by going on? Well, firstly, to be fair, the Liberal Party, the government appoints the chair of the ABC and the board, and the board and the chair appoint the managing director, and that's all a Liberal Party politician can influence at this stage. They can use their mouths and say something. Well, have you, well that's, a, that, that's a different point, and s some of them do. Having said that, what I noticed last night is Tanya Plebisek is a very senior Labor Labor spokesperson. So obviously the program would have wanted to get someone senior from the Liberal or the National Party to go against it. They didn't. So either they asked people who wouldn't come on, which I understand is increasingly common, uh, or they didn't ask one, which I think is most unlikely. Now, the, re the reason why people won't go on programs like Conservatives won't go on programs like, like Q&A is they just get hostile audiences, they get a Bain mob, they usually get most of the panel against them, and you're better staying home and having a cup of coffee and, and, and watching Sky News. So that's the essential point. Now, I think this is happening increasingly. Now, I did my column in The Australian last Saturday and I was critical of Lee Sales and Sabra Lane about the, w the way they respectively treated the Prime Minister and the Treasurer. Now, there may be a reason to go on 7.30 and AM programs on the ABC. There's no reason to go before a Bain mob on Q&A. No. Q&A is complaining that leading figures like the Prime Minister won't come on. I don't blame you. If I was advising the Prime Minister, I would say don't go near it. It's only, there's, no down, there's only a downside. There's no upside. Well, if the Liberals understand that the ABC is hostile to them and a national broadcaster is not somewhere that they can safely appear, not because they're asked tough questions, but simply because it's a mob atmosphere, it's feral, yeah. it's a bias, then perhaps they should do something about the ABC itself. You can't just uh, let it be hijacked by the left so completely. Jared Henderson, thank, thank you so you. much indeed for your time.